Alright. Hi folks, and welcome back to another video. Now, if you have ever even think about building a uh, two-hit changer, you will have no doubt run across the question of CAN bus versus USB two-hit ports. And thus far, there have only been scattered information and, well, most of them are speculation, to be honest, on which one is the better system for your uh, tool changer. So, that is what I want to address in this video, and I'm gonna save you some time here. Ultimately, they are about the same, so just pick your poison, and don't worry too much about it. That, yeah, that's actually, that's pretty much it. If you like the video, then remember to like and subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching. Oh, wait, I guess I do need to add context to all that. <clears throat> Okay, um, before we can go into the difference between uh, these two uh, two headboard system, let's talk about the biggest similarity between the two protocol in question here. You are not going to get anywhere near the limit of either CAN bus or USB. USB 2.0 cable can go up to 5 meters and a standard CAN network at uh, 500 kilobit per second or so can go up to 40 meters without a repeater. All that while the maximum umbilical length from a two head to the, uh, the signal source that is in the basement in a Voron 350 is less than two meter long. So the determining factor on which two head you board you should be going for had nothing to do with the protocol themselves, but rather the build and maintenance experience associated with each of these two head board. And to that end, in the context of multi two heads, a can two head boards are very simple and cheap to set up in terms of the hardware. Down in the basement, all you will need is to set up this 16 quid. Uh, U2C board which convert USB signal to CAN signal. Then from there it's just a matter of splitting the wires to how many of your uh, two head you want and uh, well if editing winning it has done his job correctly then there should be a diagram popping up somewhere on the screen right now showing you how to where things go and looking at this diagram the one highlight that I want to have here is the fact that you can set up both XLR panel at the same time you install the U2C board. That is because there is no additional electronics required to for each of these connectors. And what that means is you can easily add more tool head down the line without the need to flip the whole thing over and, and get access to the basement and figuring out where things go down there. But before you ran out and buy a bucket full of these CAN bus to headboard, uh, there's a catch. If you have never set up a CAN network before, well, just make sure to block out the entire weekend for this one task. And seriously, um, here is a screenshot of three different documents with conflicting instructions on what to put into your network config. And the infuriating fact here is that this is literally the first step that you will need to do to set up the CAN bus network. And what that means is, if there's any misconfiguration here at all, you would not have known it until hours and hours of troubleshooting later. That's not to say though, uh, you, that you are going to get into tr do any of this trouble or and have to spend the weekend on it. I mean, surely, there are people out there who can get the whole thing up and running within one or two attempts of their configs. I'm just saying that I am not one of them. More importantly though, uh, that is also not to say this is this network setup is bad. All this complexity is a pain in the rear when you want to just get him up and running, but it is actually a blessing when you need to work with what you have. For example, if one of your multiple two headboard cannot handle a uh, megabit per second uh, data stream at, in a uh, 70 Celsius chamber, you can just go into the config and dial it down to 500 kilobit per second or something and it will may just work. Before you ask, no, USB 2 headboard do not work reliable at these temp 
and well also very more importantly actually your printer will not be happy to hold a chamber that hot and things like micro switches and fan will start failing at that temp anyway in the same multi to head context usb to head boards are for the polar opposite experience for both uh, the good and the bad when compared with the CAN uh, boards. Software wise is as close to plug and play as it gets. You will just need to plug in and without even needing to SSH into your Pi, run terminal commands. You can just get the serial ID directly from your web interface, copy paste it into your config, then voila, you got a new tool head. Great. The weekend long part of the USB to headboard though is figuring out how you're going to fit all of that uh, wiring and uh, put all the, those hardware down in the basement in the first place. And here's a diagram on how things uh, are supposed to be wired for USB. And the key thing to highlight here, well things to highlight here, uh, first, there is no standard on the shape and size of the daughter board for the USB 2 heads. So there are going to be a different mounting system depending on the 2 head board you have decided to go with. For Miss Changer specifically, there is a financial and time limitation on what I can get my hand on and officially support. So um. Here I have test and make a custom mount for the daughter board of the LDO Nighthawk SB and that will be the only officially support USB 2 head configuration for the uh, stealth burner uh, 2 heads. The second thing to take note of is hardware compatibility. Well I cannot say this for sure because I don't know what the root cause is but in my experience a USB 2.0 hub connected to a uh, USB 2.0 port has never worked reliably. So if you're going to use one of those Raspberry Pi alternative that does not come with a USB 3.0 port, your mileage may vary. And once again, I do not know the root cause. You may just get lucky with your combination of Raspberry Pi alternative and your uh, USB hub. Lastly, if we have another look at this diagram here, those daughter board come included with every unit of the Nighthawk and well what that means is unless you bought and installed all of your two head all in one go you're going to have to uh, flip the machine over and tinker with the electronic every time you got a new two head and well these things can wait up to like 30 kilo or something so I can already see how this can be a complete deal killer for many of you. With that said, there are some alternatives to get a USB hub like the BirdNets so that you can run all the cable up to the XLR panel all at once and well, if you're willing to pay for it that is. And that is a perfect segue to the final difference between the user experience between Canvas versus USB. Troubleshooting. The difference here is not unlike the computer operating system of uh, Linux versus Mac OS. Okay, uh, a bit far out, but hear me out. Like Linux, CAN is extremely configurable in software. If any problem is to arise at all, the first well, or second thing you should be doing is to dig through your config and twist the various digital knobs until you get something that works for you and your specific case. On the other hand, USB, like Mac OS, what you receive out of the box is what you get. It will either work for you or it doesn't. And if you found it to be faulty or if you, uh, it just doesn't work for your specific use case, your only option is to get rid of it and get a new one. Which to be fair is not uh, some unholy app or anything. If the thing that you bought does not work as expected, just get your money back or replace it. And this extends to Canvas board as well. Some faults are simply cannot be fixed um, with using uh, software. And if you are not comfortable poking around in the Linux terminal, literally for Canvas, and it's going straight for the uh, replacement option anyway, then 
you should give USB to headboard a serious consideration. So, in conclusion, ultimately, no matter which option you go for, it is gonna be a weekend or two a project for you. So, uh, you know, just pick your poison and have fun. Now, that is it. If you like the video, then remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!